welcome to Globe Watch with me, Charles Obune, airing from Studio One of our CRTV Global Operations Center here in Balatu, here on the Cameroon. A very special edition which talks about football and the World Cup in particular. Because in about four and a half hours from now, the finals of this year's World Cup takes place at the Maracana Stadium in Brazil, which has been cost of one of the most expensive World Cups since the competition's history about 84 years now. Brazil, of course, has been out of the competition and four days before the World Cup, my guest on this program was the president of the Federation of International Football Association. Joseph Seth Blatter, in a rare global interview, told me that the World Cup in Brazil will be a special one. Joseph Seth Blatter, welcome to Globe Watch. Thank you, with pleasure. Few days from now, the next World Cup begins in the competition's most honored nation, Brazil. How will you qualify a competition yet to start? There will be an exceptional competition in Brazil because we are back in the country where really the football is played. So just how exceptional has the World Cup been in Brazil? My guest today is a football coach. Sebastian Rook, thanks very much for accepting our invitation on Globe Watch. Thanks to you, Charles Ebony. Before uh, the World Cup started, my guest on this program was the president of FIFA, Joseph Z. Blatter and uh, he declared that there will be an exceptional World Cup in Brazil. Just how exceptional has the World Cup been in Brazil? Yes, but <coughs> I don't know what is ex exceptional in, uh, in this World Cup, really. Uh, maybe because they play in, uh, in Brazil only, because about football, um, I'm not sure it's one of the best uh, competition. But maybe he was talking exceptional in terms of history-making events during the World Cup, which are some of those uh, historical moments in this World Cup which have not been found somewhere, for example? For me, nothing. Just one thing, uh, historical in this World Cup, the semi-final uh, Germany against uh, Brazil. About, about football, really, uh, for me, it's a big deception. I'm really disappointed about uh, this World Cup. What was exceptional in that match? What was historic in that the match in particular? <laughs> the score is the first time in semi-final you can uh, you can check one score like that, 7-1. Uh, um, for sure, it's not good for for football, for the mondial football. Not good because uh, you have a big difference between two teams and uh, especially one historical team like Brazil. Uh, it's really bad for football. Uh, maybe it, 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 Blatter was talking of exceptional moments maybe in terms of what will be created in, 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 in Brazil. Let me just give you some statistics of what has happened in Brazil. And since you are talking of the semi-final match between Brazil and Germany, for the very first time in the World Cup history, we had 36 million tweets on Twitter in that particular match. We had 200 million Facebook tweets in that match. That should be exceptional, right, in terms of social media outcry and reaction. Yes, uh, of course, but you know, football is popular before this World Cup. We don't need a uh, World Cup in Brazil. No, we have not seen that in other competitions. We have not even seen that in other football competitions. At least we should accept that something exceptional has taken place in Brazil. Yes, but uh, at this moment you have a lot of advertising about, uh, about this World Cup because this World Cup in Brazil, because uh, Brazil is the country of uh, football, for sure. They win uh, five times the World Cup, so um, a lot of fun and uh, it's like a show. But um, what me about technique, about everything, for me it's not exceptional. Only, okay. only about fun, about stadium, about uh, fiesta, but uh, not about football. We'll be coming to the techniques in a short while. Um, the opening ceremony itself was carried a global message on uh, ensuring that the global environment is maintained. For the very first time, we saw the opening ceremony of the World Cup, which was about 25 minutes, very short indeed. But 
specific in saying that we need to preserve the Amazon forest. That in itself should be exceptional, right? Hmm. Yes, it's a special uh, special message. Uh, but for me, my deception starts at this moment. Uh, 25 minutes, nothing. Um, for a lot of people, we, we are waiting about a big ceremony about a big show about uh, a lot of samba yes carnival <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no nothing and maybe um, i don't know maybe fifa don't have money for this ceremony i don't know but of course this is a competition that cost some 11 billion dollars to the brazilians certainly the nature of the stadium is not worth yes it's big but I think um, one big part of investment about uh, about stadium, really, because uh, um, this this World Cup cost a lot, a lot, a lot for FIFA, for Brazil uh, government. Um, so I I don't know after because only people who can go in Brazil can speak about uh, about that about uh, all investment uh, maybe for road maybe for uh, for over over things but uh, good stadium nice stadium one or two are not finished before the the competition um, but uh, I hope for the Brazil people it's a good thing for the future well, you are a football coach um probably one day you will be coaching a national football team which is a uh, uh, which will be maybe the star of the time when you'll be doing that. Um, were you shocked of the fact that the big names of football, Spain, England, and others, immediately left the competition just in the first round? Italy, was that shocking? No, no, no. I speak uh, before the competition. Um, the big risk is the World Cup of... Uh, tired team and uh, for England it's normal you know England now since uh, a long time maybe 40 years more uh, they cannot win and uh, for England it's not a surprise of course for Spain it's a surprise but you have a lot of players like Xavi like Iniesta they play a lot a lot a lot of game uh, before in European competition and the same with uh, Italy but it's not only about team. You have the big problem or also with um, a lot of players. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm coming to that. Why is it that? I find it so difficult to understand why the big names of the global football industry find it so difficult to bring glory to their national teams at the level of the World Cup. Nigeria, JJ Okosha ended his career without a trophy. Cameroon, Samuel Etofi is somehow catastrophe at the World Cup. You take Iniesta, maybe he may celebrate the South African expedition. You take Rooney for the English people. All of these big players, they play so exceptional in their club sites. But when they come to their national teams, they are almost a catastrophe, a disaster. Why can't they deliver at that level? It's really simple to explain. Um, you cannot win a competition with one or two names or one or two players. All of them, if you remember, Zidane played with a big team, big French team, uh, also with Maradona. Um, you, 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 you have to, to, to build one team around the big name. Technically, what is the problem as a coach? What is the problem? Uh, maybe you have only one or two big players in this generation. Look, uh, Holland play with uh, Robin, but play only for Robin. If you block Robin, Netherlands cannot play. Uh, the same for Argentina. But Argentina have a big block defensive. So it's good for Messi. Messi is not in good condition, not good fitness in this World Cup. But the team work for him. If you play only for one player, you cannot. And in club, it's not the same situation. Because you work all of the year with the same players. So it's very easy to have a good system or good tactics to play. In national team, it's very, very hard because you have um, your players only maybe 15 days or three weeks before the competition. So it's not easy for a national team head coach. One recurring team, especially with African football at the World Cup, is that there is this problem of bonuses, which comes on and on, over and over, during all World Cup appearances. We all know that FIFA does not hand 
the eight million dollar package to all the teams before the start of the competition that money is given to them at the end of the competition why is it that only african teams suffer from the monetary scandals at the world cup which is of course a psychological menace to their playing i think the problem is about the mentality one the mentality of players but only uh, not only that you have also the another problem so the, i think the players want to know um, about money where this money uh, can go after the competition and uh, they prefer to take the money and this money don't stay uh, maybe in federation or uh, i know about cameroon uh, some players now wait uh, some bonus now maybe since 25 years <laughs> so uh, i don't know if it's good but you have to sign for me one contract before maybe one year before if you uh, qualify the team you can touch this bonus or this bonus if you go on the first um, second don't, round don't, don't you think that better. it's equally the fault of fifa of not handing this money before the competition because i believe that fifa should be handing this money before the competition starts in order to avoid all the disarrays all the problems all the infightings all the 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 the, the, the unspeakable uh, circumstances that we see at times but you know fifa paid a lot of time uh, and gives a lot of money um, all of the year about a lot of project so i think you have to manage this money uh, before you put in bank and and wait before the competition after you give this money and after you you, you can take back the money of uh, for example the money of world cup let's talk uh players now at the world cup um you uh trained you 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 are part of those who uh brought up the captain of the current french team Hugo Lloris, you trained him at the basic level. How much does he love you and how much do you talk to each other from time to time? Huh, I don't know, better if you ask directly to Hugo. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, Hugo is like my children. I, um, I'm the coach of Hugo when he had uh, 12 years old, 13 years old, uh, before he go in uh, OGC Nice. And uh, it's a really good, good children before. Now he's a man. <laughs> and, um, but all depend about uh, education and uh, this guy is really good. Does he respect you today? Does he respect yes, you? Yes, 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 of course. But w w what accounts for this disrespect of players to coaches that we always see at the World Cup? Is it a problem of education? Is it a problem of stardom? Is it because they are seen more than you guys who are behind the scenes? Or I don't know. What yeah. explains the situation? I think it's a problem with education. I know I know the father of uh, Hugo Loris and a really good man, you know. And... Um, Every time you explain for him, you have not only football in your life, you have everything around. So if you are concentrated only for football, you cannot uh, continue your career. You have to stay like when you are children. And uh, with uh, this education, uh, you go, go uh, up and have a really good career. So um, you have a lot of uh, players like that, but I think you have to, <coughs> you have to help the young players if you help young players, you can have a lot of players like Hugo Loris. Should there be standards of education in football? Because most of our football players, it is believed, uh, don't even have a university degree. Should we take the American model where before you enter NBA, you must have a first degree in order to balance the educational level, which most people are blamed for poor behavior, arrogance, indiscipline, in fighting. We saw someone comfortable scenes at this World Cup, especially with the Cameroonian team. I don't want to talk that for the moment because I'm still waiting for an official either from Faker Food or the Ministry of Youth and Sports or from the Prime Minister's office to be guest on this program to understand what actually went on. What Technically, when you look at the psychology of players, you are a coach. What accounts to their indiscipline specifically? You know, psychology of players is 50% of the players. And... Uh, but it's not um, only a problem about um, about playing because in France we have a um, technical formation center uh, with each team, uh, Paris Saint-Germain, Saint-Etienne, well, all of the other ones. But we have problem also in France. So I think it's a personal situation. It's a personal philosophy. I think if you are a good man, you're a good man. If you're a bad man, you're a bad man and you stay like that all of your life. 
So, um, you know, it's a big problem of society, not only uh, about football. Um, we have to change, of course, and try to help the young players. But we start to help this player at maybe 14 or 15 years old. I think it's too late. We, uh, we, we have to start and speak about that for the, for the children, maybe at seven or eight uh, years old. And uh, also in our amateur team, uh, not only after in professional, uh, professional team. You know very well that since the World Cup started, like it, uh, it is going on in Brazil, and, it w and today, no African football team has crossed the quarterfinals level. Why? Every time the same problem. Uh, before we hear something, uh, this year is for African, this year is for African, but I think uh, Africa have to work uh, very hard, very hard. Um, for example, in Cameroon, we don't have a lot of field, we don't have a lot of pitch, and only bad pitch. So it's very hard to work with young children and after uh, have to good, 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 good players. Uh, same problem in Nigeria. Uh, it's a big problem about organization. Um, if you want a um, big team, you have to take a plan for four, five, six, seven years. Not only for one year. It's a long project. And here it's only for short terms. Six months, one year, two years, it's impossible. You cannot work like that. You have to take a big project, long project, take your time, and you can build something interesting. In this condition, at this moment, African teams cannot win the World Cup or go in semifinals. The World Cup will be ending very shortly in, in, in Brazil in what is going to be a kind of a very spectacular uh, ceremony. Um, which of the players has marked you in this competition? For me, the best one is Arjen Robben. Uh, Arjen Robben and uh, maybe Thomas Müller, the two best players in this competition. Why? But this, they, 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 were, they were not the most talked about players of the competition. There is one name which has constantly come out in the vocabulary of everybody, Neymar and even the media. It is his first World Cup appearance and the Brazilian people uh, expected a lot from him and I'm sure he delivered for the matches he played. Yes, but he played well during the, the, the first round. But after, he started to be tired. And when, I explained for you before, when you play only for one player, of course the player after is really tired and all of team wait about only him. So. All of Brazil wait about Neymar. I think it's not good, and it's a really young players. I think you have to 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 continue to progress, and uh, Brazil uh, must have a real team around Neymar. Neymar, I think, is the players of the future, but for the moment, he's too young. You certainly watched uh, a majority of the matches. I, I, I'm sure. Which action do you think occurred in the field? Which some of the referees were unable to detect. <laughs> Which is that thing that you saw and that the referee did not react that you think he made a mistake, that he would have reacted? The challenge mm -hmm. to Neymar? Yes, maybe, maybe, maybe. But not only, uh, not only Vince one, not only Vince one. So... Can we have them? We have a lot of problems and a lot of mistakes during this World Cup can about referees. Can you quote them, for yeah. example? Yes, uh, the, the first game, brazil Croatia. The first game, the penalty uh, um, for Fred, I think it's not uh, it's mm -hmm. not good for f for football. I know Platini uh, don't like the the video. Milheim for the video um, for this competition or maybe European Cup or uh, African Cup. We cannot continue in this way. Football now is modern. Football evolve every time, and uh, we have to go with technological system in the same way. You have all, a lot, a lot of run. Look, Suarez. Uh, okay, after you can take decision, but during the game, normally you regret play at ten players. It's very important. France uh, against Dutchland. You are maybe Were you one. shocked by the actions of Luis Suarez? Yes, but everybody know. All of people know Suarez, <laughs> so it's not the first time with him. Uh, it's a wonderful players, but but <laughs> big problem with uh, with spirit, and. 
we cannot continue like that. Um, we take we have to take decision about referring. You said you favor the goal line technology. You like it. Why do you think that FIFA decided to use to take operational the goal line technology only when Frank started playing? <laughs> About that, you Are know. Are the French people suspicious in <laughs> <laughs> But goal line technology is good, but for me it's not the most important. Uh, you why can was it put five, only, six, seven. Why did they start using it only when the match with France was concerned? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Maybe uh, example for Platini. <laughs> 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 but uh, now in reality, um, I think we have a lot uh, of, of, of course, things. Of course, he's a French citizen, and since he doesn't like the goal line technology, no, no, he don't they, like said, they, they said, that, OK, we are going to start with the account. Yes, account. but you know, goal line technology is only two, three or four times during the World Cup. But about penalty zone, maybe you have 10, 20 situations. So I think we have to, to, to find another solution about, uh, about video system for uh, penalty zone or uh, for things like uh, Suarez. Okay. And uh, for referee, you you are, we have to help referee in the future because it's very hard. Football go fast, 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 and referees stay uh, human, and uh, it's really hard for, for them. Sure, all of us are human. Let me just give you um, some statistics from uh, Cambridge University Press. Uh, they have done a, a, a pool of the most common words which were uh, ascribing or describing each team in this World Cup. Um, uh, all the 32 teams, each of them have. Let me just give you what they have given to Brazil. Emotional, popular, desperate. Let me just take Uruguay, which is the last on this classification. Bite, disgrace, don't die. Uruguay, we are talking of Luis Suarez here because of, of his biting spirit. Let me give you that of Spain. Defensive, poor, humiliation. And let me take you to Cameroon. This is what the university puts Cameroon. Hapless, battle, chaotic. How can you describe England? If you don't have that of England, I will give you. But which words would you use? To describe the English national team because it is here. If you fail the test, for I me, mean, yeah, sure. <laughs> One word: uh, deception, deception, uh, defensive. Also, uh, England deception, tired. You have a lot of words for, you, for you, England. You, you, you are on the right track because this is what the university says about England: exciting, inexperienced, disappointing, which is of course the equivalent of deception. Coach, just about some one minute before I come back to you. Ladies and gentlemen, the final of the World Cup is taking place in Brazil in about four hours from now, and it will be the end of the competition as Germany takes on the Latin American country of Argentina. And let me just give you some context about that match. It will be the first final, or if you like, if Germany wins today's World Cup, it will be the first victory since the unification of the country in 1990, following the collapse of the Soviet Union. So a trophy today for Germany will be a gift by the Mannschaft to the nation to celebrate the 25th anniversary of unification at the end of the collapse of the Berlin Wall. And on the side of Argentina, if she wins the cup, it will be the first time in 24 years. And that will put an end to the debate whether Lionel Messi or Maradona is the best player in that country. So if Argentina wins that competition, then the debate of whether Lionel Messi or Maradona will come to an end today and automatically it will be Messi to be the best player of that country in football history, taking into consideration that he has had four ballon d'or. So whosoever wins the World Cup tonight, it will be a historic event on both sides 
of the country. And another element of context in today's final of the World Cup is that it is the World Cup of two popes. Wow. How does that come about? You notice very well that Pope Francis come from Argentina and Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI comes from Germany. So probably the two popes need to meet in another meeting today and be watching the World Cup from a distance. That is quite interesting. Why is not, not, not only, not why only about is money. Why money always the problem in football? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> no, but Christian no. Perslow, um, a former managing director at Liverpool, said um, recently that the entire football family is made up of greedy people. Why are you people so greedy in football when it comes to money? <laughs> no, no, it's not only about money. Money is one part of the problem. Sebastian Rook, thanks very much for being guest on Globe Watch Day and see you shortly. Thanks to you. I'm really glad to be here. If only you knew how great you are Every time you try so hard to be Maybe a great pillar of your country Or to be the change maker of the world Then I don't think you'll ever run Changing fortune of time.